Hey guys, it's Morella. So today I am reviewing and demoing as well as doing a wear test of the Bourjois Healthy Mix foundation for you guys. I know that this is not a new foundation. However, I think that they either reformulated it or maybe they just changed the name. I'm really not sure. But before it was called the Healthy Mix Serum or Healthy Mix Serum Foundation. Now it's just Healthy Mix Foundation. It says that it wears for up to 16 hours and it has vitamins C, E, and B5 in it. So I'll read you what it says on the back. It says, with its vitamin mix, it instantly erases signs of fatigue for a flawless, fresh, and healthy looking complexion. 70% more radiance, 24 hour hydration, non-comedogenic, dermatologically tested. Yep, that's pretty much it. I wear the color at 53, it is light beige. And fair warning, I picked this up at a Boots in London, so I do not believe we sell it in the US. I have yet to see it, I've checked online, I've checked in Ulta's and drugstores. Sadly, we totally used to carry the brand Bourjois in CVS. I remember getting it from there 10-15 years ago, back when I like first started wearing makeup, and unfortunately we don't anymore. So I picked this up because I had previously heard of it on YouTube. I think I had heard a couple people mention it, and when I was in London I saw it, and by chance I was like, you know, I'm gonna try it, I wanna try something new. I didn't even know if this color was gonna match me. Thankfully it does beautifully. And this turned out to be one of my favorite new foundations. It's rare that I try a foundation I really like, actually. I have tried pretty much everything that Sephora can foundation is the one thing I love to try but it kind of turns out that I hate almost every foundation so I got really lucky with this one and because I fell in love with it so much and so fast sound like I'm talking about a boy I wanted to share it with you guys if you guys end up watching this review and being like okay well I really want to get that foundation now you can get it on Amazon and I believe you can get it online at bourgeois Dot com or something. The only tricky thing about that is the shade range, but it does run like pretty true to other drugstore foundations. So if you kind of know you're like the third shade in and you have like a pink undertone or you have a yellow undertone, I think it's pretty easy to pick based off of that. This foundation is radiant. It's not a matte foundation. It's not dewy, but it is radiant. And by that, I mean, it has a bit of a glow, but it's not that almost wet look. It's more of like a very fresh, natural skin look. So I would say it's more of like a satin finish. It says 16 hour wear. I'm not even sure if I've worn it for 16 hours at one time. I feel like that's a really long time to be wearing makeup all day. And usually right when I get home at the end of the night, I'm like, take it all off. What I can tell you is I really believe this foundation is good for all skin types. And the reason I say that is because I'm normally oily. When I see foundations that are advertised as being like glowy or radiant or hydrating, I'm like, yeah, that's not gonna work for me because even though I'm no longer on the extremely oily side, my skin kind of fluctuates between being oily and completely normal. As my skin has fluctuated over these past two months that I've been using it, it has worked for me every day. I usually like to start off by saying bad things about each product, you know, just because every product has its pros and cons, and I believe that I should start off with the cons and then end off with the pros so that we end off on a good note. However, personally, I don't think that this product has any cons. It has been working amazingly for me. The only thing that I could really see being a downside is if you're one of those people who likes super, super matte full coverage, then you're not gonna like this foundation because it is a little more of just a natural finish and natural coverage. So if you're like, you know, I want that really thick, very full coverage look, then this isn't gonna be for you. And I wouldn't even say that that's a bad thing. I would just say that, you know, not every foundation is for everyone. Some are made for dry skin, some are made for oily skin. The list goes on, and this is definitely for people who like a more natural look, which is me. I love kind of like a medium coverage foundation, which this is, I would say, it's right in the middle. Too light of coverage, it doesn't cover up blemishes, and I don't have perfect skin, so I need that coverage, you know? But at the same time, I don't like something that's so full coverage that I feel like I can't see my skin through it anymore, and that I feel like doesn't look like my face anymore. I don't want to feel like I'm wearing a mask and I know that not all super full coverage foundations are very thick or heavy, but to me, when I like see it on my face and I know how much coverage there is, I kind of like freak out a little bit. So <laughs> I prefer something that looks really natural and blends in really easily with my own skin. Now, like I said, even though I'm not sure if it is 16 hour wear, I have worn it all day, like pretty much every day for the past almost two months. So I can tell you it does last all day. It looks beautiful on no matter if my skin is really dry, which it has been because since December I've been through like extreme fluctuations of either being really sick and extremely dry or healthy and it's hot outside now. It's February, I know, but it's like 80 degrees every day. And so I will get kind of oily and it stays on. It's just... <laughs> 
the best. So I'm going to do the demo now so you guys can see how it applies and how it looks up close and everything. And then after I show you guys the wear test, I'll come back and talk about it a little more. So if you want to see that, let's get started. So first I definitely suggest shaking it. I shake all of my foundations just in case it separates within the bottle. You don't want it to be like a different consistency than normal. I like to use a brush for my foundation. I know that some people prefer a beauty blender. I'm using the Luxie 532 Round Top Blender. So I first put maybe like a quarter pump and my skin is pretty perfect for this right now because I have some blemishes. So you get to see the coverage. I always start by stippling it onto my cheeks and this is because my cheeks get the most acne, scarring, blemishes, so I like to cover that up first. Oh yeah, and I forgot to mention, I am wearing concealer under my eyes because I don't put foundation under my eyes ever, so I'm just doing this like how I normally would. So when I get kind of like to my upper lip area and like my lower jaw, I start blending it downward here to kind of go like under my neck, and then I still stipple a bit in this area, but I'll also blend it downward. So I'll take that just like as far as it goes and I do about another quarter pump for this side and I'll kind of concentrate it where I have a blemish and then I'll move it outward from there. So I do stipple and then I blend downward. And the reason why I blend downward is because if I have any peach fuzz on my face or just any blemishes, I kind of just like sweep it downward and that helps to like hold it all flat. Then lastly, I take like a super small pump, maybe not even a quarter pump. I actually think I got a little too much. So all in all, I'm using maybe like three fourths of a pump. If you prefer to do your whole face at once, then you can just pump it all out at once. But lastly, I do my nose and my forehead. And I really put the least amount of coverage on these areas because I don't have like blemish prone skin here. So really there's not much to cover. Although you can see that like on my flawed areas, it did give amazing coverage. So now that I'm done, I'll show you everything up close. So you can see that these blemishes still show a little, but they're not nearly as bad as they were before. Texture looks good. It has not a dewy finish, but like a little tiny bit of a glow. To me, it's more of like a satin finish. It's not matte, but it's not quite dewy either. It's kind of in the middle. Color is really good. Coverage is nice and even. Overall, I love the way it looks. I'm going to conceal these two areas just a bit. I don't want to hide anything from you guys. I'm just going to, you know, fix them a little. I'm going to powder my face, apply my blush and bronzer like I normally do, and then I'll be right back. All right, I'm back. Skin's looking good. I'm really happy with it. You can see that after I powder it, it does get a little more matte, but that's just because powder is powder. It does give like a more matte finish, you know? So really what you're seeing is just like the freshness of the powder and everything. I'm going to wear it for a few hours and allow my natural oils to come through because I do have kind of oily skin. Not crazy oily at the moment, but still on the oily side. And I'll show you guys just how it wears for the rest of the day. I don't know. It might only be like five, six hours, but I'll come back in a little. All right guys, are we ready? It has been about six hours. And yes, I touched up my lipstick if you're wondering. I'm wearing the ColourPop Luxe lipstick in Layover. So I'm gonna zoom in a little more. So I do see some separation and it's not perfect like here around the nose, but I can't be too picky because that happens to me with every single foundation that I ever wear. I just have like very deep nose creases so the foundation gets stuck up under there it also creased a little in my smile lines and it kind of like crinkled up around my mouth but that's because i talk and i smile a lot all day and again that happens with every foundation that i wear so they're not gonna be like perfect you know <laughs> i'm gonna have to take what i can get as far as makeup is concerned it does look like this blemish came out a little more i don't think it looks bad at all i wouldn't be like embarrassed about this however it is showing and it's not perfect you know so the coverage didn't fully last in that area and then on the forehead it kind of creased a tiny bit here as well like you know from expression lines and then um it's just a little oily in this area as well as the tiny bit oily like on my nose but that's pretty much it i feel like in this area like on my cheeks where I normally get oily, it's just a little more dewy, not so much oily. And it didn't really separate like on my skin necessarily. So even though I would consider this separation, it's not that curdled milk look, which is like, sounds so gross, I know, but that's a really good description. Certain foundations will completely separate. This is like day wear, you know, like going out, running errands, doing things, daytime wear. This isn't me just like relaxing and being perfect at home. And I'm really happy with the way that it looks. 
Like even though it's not perfect, I don't expect it to be because it is still makeup. So overall, I'm so happy with the coverage. If you're one of those people who likes medium coverage, kind of a satiny finish, I really, really recommend this foundation. I think that it looks just so beautiful and radiant on the skin without being overly dewy. I also meant to mention to you guys that it does completely dry down. A lot of radiant or dewy foundations will stay kind of wet. And then if you try to powder them, like say, for example, you're using a beauty blender with the powder on it, it will pick up some of the product because the product is still wet. And that's something I really don't like. This foundation doesn't do that. Luckily, it completely dries down, so you don't have to worry about that and it doesn't like ruin your powder brush or anything. Just in case you guys are wondering which powder I used, I use the Cover FX Perfect Setting Powder every day. It's my favorite one ever. And I use it with every foundation, so that's kind of like my go-to setting powder. And I try to use that with every single foundation that I'm trying out so that I'm not biased like, oh, this one was terrible and this one was great. And then I'm using different powders all the time. I just try to keep it the same for each one. I'm also really glad that I was able to just pick my color on the first try because I'm not in London very often so if I hadn't I wouldn't have really been able to like exchange it and that would have been sad. And then I wouldn't have known how great this foundation is because I am just in love with it. I think that this is the first foundation I've ever really really loved to death that isn't a completely matte finish. Because with oily skin, it's hard to find foundations that will actually stay on and last all day that aren't, you know, mattifying or oil controlling. It is considered a drugstore foundation. I bought it for $9.99, so like 10 pounds. I can't remember if it was 10 pounds or 10 American dollars, but I do know I paid for it in American dollars because I was at the airport. So they did a currency exchange. However, just know it's around 10 pounds, $10. So I feel like pretty average price for a drugstore foundation. If you're looking for something long wearing that can be worn in really cold weather or really warm weather, which I know 80 degrees isn't like super warm, but that's my test over these past two months, you know? I've been in London where it's like 40 degrees, and then I've been here where it's 80, so <laughs> it lasted me really well in both conditions. All right guys, overall, I can't say enough good things about it and really that's why I wanted to make a review for you. It was more just me sharing the fact that I love this foundation and I think you guys will too. All right guys, if you find this video helpful, please give it a thumbs up for me. Please subscribe to me if you haven't already and thank you so much for watching. Bye.